deep inner growth how does it all work how does it all work you know surely there's bit different parts to it how does it all fit together how does it make a difference to a person's life well like most intuitive sensitives when i was growing up i could describe my life as consistently unpredictable in other words all i could rely on was inconsistency inconsistency in my environment inconsistency in the things behaviors of the people in my environment all of the, those things felt to me like everything in my life was jumping it jumped up and down it moved it changed it was never something static and um, predictable okay an impossible environment for revealing the authentic self so i remember even when i was very young thinking who am i who am i what am i who am i what am i what's my identity what who am i who am i in this world where do i fit into these things so my path has most certainly been about um finding that and solving that in my own perspective how i utilize that in my working life is all i do is share with you some of those principles and those ways of putting things together to give an intuitive sensitive a level of consistency that feels right so since providing my own life with more routine i have found the space absolutely to grow so every month i pick a topic of the month and then apply the tools i use um, and my teachings to that particular topic so in this video in this brief video we're going to have a quick look at each of those tools and see how they interrelate, okay? And see how they interrelate and how they become relevant to an intuitive sensitive. So I use this, which is called the tree of life, okay? This is something that is thousands of years old, the principle of it. Um, it's infiltrated various different philosophies, religions, ways of life through many, many centuries. So it's, it's quite a, well, it's a strong way of having a look at how life works um, but I use it as the, this background and this symbol of how to put these different things together for an intuitive sensitive so we can look at it in terms of the chakra system you know if you're well aware of inner development then you know you've come across the, ch the chakras and and how they relate to your life and feeling them so you may feel in the solar plexus you feel that sort of jumping feeling you might feel in the heart center um, when something bothers you a tightening in the chest you may feel in the throat which is very common for intuitive sensitives a tightening when um you are thinking about something that you're passionate about or you're trying to get your um the core of who you are across and it maybe it doesn't quite come out and it feels like a tightening in in the throat as you develop your intuitive self you may even felt the the brow chakra as a, as a kind of tightening or a kind of tingling sensation on the top of your head so you know we all as sensitives have some kind of awareness of the chakra system so if you can imagine that the chakra system relates to um, the tree of life as well as well as everything else and imagine that this you in the in the body is the base and you as the whole self is this 110 here at the top so the whole self is having a full perspective of everything okay so in looking at the tree of life it doesn't mean to say that anyone's been hit on the head with a magic stick it's everything to do with everything being interconnected and understanding those different layers of interconnectedness and how things work all of these are what's called the psychic pathways okay so in the tree of life there's um two different schools of thought and how those work but these uh, pathways the pathways and how they connect give different uh, patterns and reflections of life and different life journeys and experiences so it, it gives you a, a sort of a framework of how things begin to um, reveal themselves and show themselves and when we know what these pathways are we can have a level of predictability about things to understand how one thing relates to another and to also understand how as an intuitive sensitive we don't have to take things so personally which is how we always kind of feel that um 
you know how that works for us because we have that sensitized nervous system we're very aware and we feel stress in in a stronger way than other people so not necessarily our own stress we can feel the stress of other people and sometimes if we're exceptionally empathic we take that on for them and we kind of experience those emotions for them which adds to our own stress and our own drama in our own life so Looking at things through the tree of life gives us a ways and means of identifying and always separating it from ourselves to be able to see something clearly rather than feel the overload of our own um, nervous system. So within that, I also layer in here something that's called the life codes, okay, which um, the, each here are the, are the numbers and how that relates. So the life codes are a combination of how this works as the tree of life mixed with numerology. Okay, and that gives a, a depth to each um, component of the tree and also relates to you in your own life. So you will have a life code. So you will have a life code number that reflects you and your life in general um, through your lifetime. Okay, so it gives you a sort of a little bit of insight, deeper insight into how you operate and how you work. The pictures on here, so each picture is again it's a symbol it's a symbol of how that relates in the world so as an example here in the six so it, it's a butterfly breaking forth from the chrysalis so you know the symbolism of that as an example is you know is it easy for a butterfly to break forth from the chrysalis no it has to push against something in order to build its wings in order for it to fly so you know that's very symbolic of how the soul works Sometimes it has to push against the struggle in order to fly. And you've got lots of pathways into this, into the soul in the middle there, right, right in the middle in the centre of things, central focus. So that kind of suggests in life that you've got a lot of things that um, make up the whole of who you are, as you would feel it in the solar plexus in that chakra. So that you know kind of relates to the solar plexus and how we process emotion from fear to excitement we feel it in the gut okay it's that gut instinct that we um often refer to in in life whether you are someone who's very open and aware or someone who who's not and likes to look at things in a very methodical manner we all still refer to gut and gut instinct so all of these and the words okay in each one also relates to different components of how the tree of life interacts and works with us as an individual and as a whole so we can also layer into that okay which is also how i utilize it we can layer into it um characters and personalities okay so we can say okay well we have someone who's a life code two let's call her jessica Okay, and we'll call this one uh, Susan. Okay, so we could say we can make it into people. So we've got Jessica and we've got Susan who's a life, Jessica is a life code two, Susan who's a life code three. And all of a sudden we start to have a level of interaction uh, and it starts to take on a character, it starts to take on a, an energy and a persona. If we then add in, um, I utilize the archetypes there's a big pile of them here okay which is um, several of the archetype decks mixed together because I like to mix them together to just to see if we get multiples so you can then add into that let's say if we ask them a question about Jessica's life in relation to Susan well we can then access parts of the young the unconscious okay which is reflected through the archetypes this is an example so we could have the storyteller as Jessica and let's say we could have God as Susan okay so um, then it becomes a story of how these two relate to each other through the female of the three vibration which is reflective of a certain type of person and the two of the male vibration how those interact this pathway that goes across here how that whether it's a conflict or a peaceful scenario and whether you know if we ask the question how does jessica relate to susan well 
I would say probably in the storyteller in the court here, we would have a little bit of conflict. So Jessica, storyteller, what do we see as a storyteller? A liar in this instance. We would be looking at, well, how does Jessica tell Susan's stories? And Susan kind of tells herself her own story because she's got this sort of self-righteous component, which is the God. So if we had these as a story that utilized itself, it would explain quite a few of the, those relationship dynamics. If we then added in the three, you know, the God and the three, we would be saying that she's very self-righteous and really very much believes that that is her layer of truth. And if we put in here, you know, the Jessica one, and we put in the storyteller who doesn't always tell the truth, and we put in there the, the two of the male energy, which is a lot more fluid and moves around, is that maybe she tells stories in, e in order to escape restriction. So we c it all expands and goes into a deeper layer of um, interest and intrigue. Okay. And as a ways and means of symbolically utilizing components of our own lives and telling our own stories specifically as an intuitive sensitive, because we're then absolutely utilizing who we are as that um, right brain um, influenced individual. Okay, so it opens up, it tells stories and, and it all kind of comes together. Then, if we also add into that, we have the consciousness line that comes up here in the middle. There's seven layers of the different layers of consciousness, the different layers of growth and the different pathways that you experience during your life and your life experience in terms of your own internal process and interests. Okay, and that becomes a whole other layer to that story. So I specialize in helping intuitive sensitives in the three key areas of their life, okay? To stop feeling tired all the time, because that's a big thing that impacts in intuitive sensitives. Why? Because we have that sensitized nervous system. And so quite often that is something that's been there, part of something from birth. And it means that our whole system interacts differently and it processes stress in a stronger way and has done since a very, very early age, especially if you then add into your life some other um, experiences of adversity during your lifetime, you then absolutely by the time you reach adulthood are in that position of being tired all the time. So I help intuitive sensitives begin the process of harmonizing or solving that particular issue. I also help them with handling difficult people again because we have that sensitized nervous system. It's really important for us to learn how to handle difficult people because again impacts us hugely on a very deep level and difficult people can make us ill. Um, so I help intuitive sensitives really figure how to solve and process those again using all these tools and matching them together to give that sense of self-empowerment and I also very importantly give them the ability to feel part of something because again for intuitive sensitives quite often through our life we sort of separated ourselves got into a process of withdrawal because confronting issues, confronting things feels too hard, too painful, too uncomfortable. So we don't and we withdraw, but actually we really do need connection and we're very connecting kind of people, especially as we take on um, other people's emotions and, and have that strong empathic nature. So it's about harmonizing all of that. So it all feels calm, comfortable. So you can get ahead and become that perfect um, scenario of imperfectly perfect. So I also provide the circle as an ongoing level of support for intuitive sensitive people. I give you that ability to uh, ask questions, receive the answers and focus on healing in terms of healing of trauma through meditations and processes all very relevant to the intuitive sensitive and a very quick way of getting that development that you're looking for. Then I also offer courses for growth up that consciousness line, those seven layers of consciousness, again, extremely relevant to you as a sensitive. So you can um, do what you would like to do in life, which is to bring what 
sometimes feels like an incredible chaos into order okay where it feels at peace in your internal world in that level of sensitivity and the tools and support that i provide help you help you achieve that if you let it i hope that's been helpful to you